Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. All right, you guys, I hope you guys are enjoying your Monday. So I'm back here with another podcast for the Tea Sippers, and I got my homeboy Tiny here with me. Hello. <laughs> so we want to go ahead and do a podcast about this whole Joe Budden, Charlemagne the God drama. If you guys do not know, earlier today on Instagram and on my Facebook page, I had posted basically a snippet because i was watching tiny caught me was like you gotta watch uh the joe button charlemagne thing he's responding to charlemagne and as i was watching it i basically heard joe stating a lot of my same talking points from my live stream that i did about him um a few days ago about his humiliation ritual that he was going through so i'm gonna go ahead and play you guys that audio really quick i'm gonna play you guys the audio of me um, on the live stream, the one that I privated, but you can still listen to it on the podcast. I'm going to play you guys a snippet of that, and then I'll be right back. If you guys don't know, before the Tahiri situation happened, Joe Budden and Charlemagne the God were beefing. Put a teacup if you guys know that. They were beefing before all this abuse stuff came out with Tahiri. Charlemagne the God called out Joe Budden. Said that he didn't understand business because Joe Budden is saying that he's leaving Spotify. Spotify is racist. Okay, good. So y'all know what I'm talking about. Basically, he feels like Spotify is racist. <clears throat> Let me keep it real. Um, Joe Budden's podcast, I don't listen to it all the time, but I do listen to it when I can. I did like his podcast. I do like uh, Rory. Is that his name? Rory and Mal? Um, or Mal? Um... I like listening to them. I think they have good synergy. And I was happy when they got their, spot, their Spotify deal because I thought that was really dope that they could go from YouTube to getting a legitimate podcasting deal. That's what everybody wants at the end of the day. So they got this deal two years ago, okay? And what Joe Budden did with his fan base, with the, the fan base he was able to create from Everyday Struggle... He basically bought a lot of black people, black men, black consumers to Spotify. So let's keep that real. He bought a lot of folks of color to Spotify who ordinarily would not have went to Spotify. But they went to follow Joe Budden because they enjoyed his podcast. One of my really good homeboys, he's a huge Joe Budden fan. He listens to every single podcast. And he keeps me abreast on the ones that I need to listen to. So he called me. He was letting me know about the whole Joe Button and Charlemagne thing. So I was listening to it and, you know, just kind of peeping game. So when it came time to negotiate the deal, they were literally trying to give Joe Button and his co co host, uh, what was it? Rolls, uh, not Rolls Royces, but Rolex watches. Trying to give them what we call nigga trinkets. Instead of a check, we're just going to give you a Cadillac. We're going to give you a watch. We're going to give you some, you know, grills. And Joe's like, fuck no. We want to check. Y'all literally bought, uh, what's the other Joe? Joe Rogan. Y'all literally took him from YouTube, gave him a $100 million contract to be with Spotify for an for a extended amount of time. Gave him all that money. Now, don't get me wrong. Joe Rogan's been in the game a long time. He's put in work. I enjoy his podcast. I, I listen to his podcast when I can. He's put in work over the years. I was super happy for him when he got that deal. Why? Because it gives competition to YouTube. YouTube needs competition. So wasn't nobody more happier than Joe Rogan getting that deal than TT. Because YouTube needs a competitor. Right? But how do you sit there and give him a $100,000 deal and then when Joe um, Budden is saying, well, hey, this is what we're worth. Here are our analytics. This is what we think we should get. And they tell him, no, we can only give you X amount of dollars. So Joe Budden walked away from the deal and was like, no, I know my worth. I'm not taking that. And I, and I agree with him. At some point in time, you have to know your worth. You have to know when people are bullshitting you, when they're insulting you. 
He bought a whole demographic of people to Spotify only to be used and shitted on. And he wasn't having it. Trust and believe a lot of that money that they're paying Joe Rogan probably came out of damn Joe Button's check. Let's keep that real. A lot of these companies will take from one person to go and pay another person that they feel is a bigger star. So Joe wasn't having it. And so then what ended up happening is that Charlemagne came out and was calling out Joe Budden and saying, well, you, you don't know about business and you can't compare yourself to Joe Rogan. You can't compare yourself to a network. And so then they had their back and forth. All right. So you guys just heard that. So that's what I was low key describing. And then today, Joe Budden is literally reiterating everything I said. So I'm going to go ahead and play you guys that audio. Go ahead and check this out. No coincidence that I come on this podcast and preach ownership and preach some of the uh, fuck nigga tendencies that some of these corporations have. And then magically for the next two weeks, there's a Joe Budden smear campaign going on. Oh, I don't disagree with that at all. I was just saying the internet is going to make the, to, the dog jokes. That's but, all I was saying. Yeah, but when you say that, you step on the fact that there could be a smear whoa, whoa, campaign. Whoa, whoa. Stop, stop, let me finish, Roy. Let me finish, Roy. Let me finish, Roy. Let me finish, Roy. I'm, I'm for you. Fully understand for the you, smear campaign. For you, it may be two separate things. But let's put ourselves in the mind of the gentleman or gentle lady that has no idea that a smear campaign exists. And yeah. now how do you feel? Uh, both can be some true. of us don't know both can be true some of us people... don't know that there are third party companies that you hire for this and this exact action mm. yeah they, they don't know they're part of the smear campaign they're just making dog jokes so what we're saying is the same thing yeah some people are just making dog jokes because it's a funny thing at the moment in your mentions not knowing they're part of this bigger plan and smear campaign and what that's I, all. <laughs> no that's true what I'm I saying, probably joked during a smear campaign and didn't realize it either. What I'm saying is when you take a step back and just look at things, I can take a dog joke. Niggas have made dog jokes. When there's this overwhelming sense of PETA should come and shoot you. <laughs> yeah, it's probably because it's a little, a little different. there's a smear campaign. When old domestic abuse allegations begin to just pop up one by one by one by one, chances are, if you know about smear campaigns, there might be one taking place. Now, contrary to popular belief, when we did our rant, our powerful, powerful rant about streaming services, DSPs, iHeart, and Charlemagne, because of the moment that we're in, a lot of black people recognize that the timing is a little weird and that a smear campaign might be taking place. And that would have to be done and executed by Spotify. There was never anything wrong. It was two people, or two companies rather, two networks rather, that did exactly what they set out to do. See, I was coming on here telling y'all that I never was asking for money and it's never been a money thing. And that's true. Some niggas judge people by what they have. Some of us judge people by what they've lost. All right, Tiny, so you just heard what Joe Budden was telling Roy and Mal. How did you feel when you first like heard what he was saying? Oh, I was kind of blown away. Like, yeah, he was, no lies were told. He's a state in fact. Like, it's just how convenient. Like, when he starts talking about this other business stuff, there's some Charlemagne hate. And, and then, so we, they start having their little back and forth out the woodwork while this other stuff that happen. Right. And, you know, I, I want to say this, because I know a lot of people are like, yeah, he clearly heard your stream or whatever, you know, regardless if he did or didn't. But I want to say a few things that I, I listened to the full two hours and that podcast, he hit on so many good points, but he's been hitting on a lot of good points for like the past, what, two weeks at this whole back and forth mm -hmm. when him and Charlemagne has been going on. Oh yeah. 
Now, even though he's calling it a smear campaign, okay, I want to reiterate to Joe in the event he runs across this podcast, what you're going through is not technically a smear campaign, and this is why, okay? A smear campaign is when somebody lies on you. What If I just sit up here and I say, oh, I spread a rumor that, oh, Tiny, you know, had a threesome in my basement. <laughs> You're like, I've never been to your house. Right. That's a smear campaign because I want to put a certain image out there of you. Right. Yeah. And a lot of times when smear campaigns happen, the people who are behind smear campaigns tend to be very narcissistic people. OK, I've been through my own smear campaign on social media. I've been through my own narcissistic attacks so I can recognize a smear campaign and a narcissistic attack when I see one. The difference is, though, when I went through it, those were unfounded lies. And to this day, nobody has a fucking receipt. Right. 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 Joe Budden's so-called smear campaign. It's not really lies. Joe mm -hmm. Budden has admitted to, you know, what I'm saying he's been called out for putting his hands on some of his ex-girlfriends like Tahiri and Esther Baxter and a few others. Um, now, he did say during the podcast that the paperwork from court was fraudulent. That's what he's saying. Sin didn't say that. So I don't know. You yeah. know, they look legit, but you never know. So even if we say, okay, the paperwork that was talking about him masturbating the dog and, you know, him and Sin getting into a fight, let's just say that that paperwork was fake. Let's give him that, right? But the audio of That's Sin facts. saying that, it's facts. That came from your baby's mother that you told it, that you told the world today that you still love, right? It also came from him. Exactly. Talking about doing some... To a little dog or whatever. Every, everybody who wants a pet is going to go something down there. Like. Right. So that's that's the difference. So it's not fair to call this a smear campaign when literally everything, I can't verify the paperwork, but if he's saying it's fake, let's at least take that off the table. Everything else mm -hmm. is real. So that's not a smear campaign when it's the truth, right? Right. The reason why I feel like this is a humiliation ritual, and that's what Joe needs to learn, that this is this goes deep, okay? The industry is deep. People want to look at the industry as if it's something, you know, like the, the industry is a community, I guess is what I'm trying to say. It's a society. It's a, it's a community. Everybody can't get in. So they have to have ways to rein you in, right? Mm -hmm. So let's take the word humiliation, do people even understand where that word comes from? I don't think so. Okay. So humiliation, the root of it, it's a Latin word. The root of humiliation is humus, which means mm -hmm. earth or dirt. What do we always say in the hood when we got something got some on dirt. somebody? Right. I got some dirt on them. Right. I got some dirt on them niggas. Oh, I got some dirt on this girl. You know, on social media, we call it tea. But in the hood, mm -hmm. we call it dirt. Well, that all comes from the word humiliation, right? So a, a humiliation ritual is what's done in like different societies to enforce a particular social order, almost like a hazing ritual in college. Mm -hmm. You know, we want to break you, mind. right? We yeah. want to break you. You think you're this big, bad jock on the football team? Well, now I'm going to do this and belittle you and make you get drunk and possibly, you know, do a, a group sex or orgy, just whatever, to keep you in line. It's no different than what they do in secret societies when they say, like, oh, um, you know, that they keep dirt over each other's heads when mm -hmm. they do pee gate and stuff like that, right? What's up? Hey, tea sippers! To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.